Thank you. So, there's a next talk. Uh, I talked to uh, the Deutsche Bahn. The probability that the train tonight is delayed <laughs> is very high, so don't worry. <laughs> so, next up is Saskia. She's a PHP developer, but she has a great passion for website accessibility. And I had the opportunity to talk to her beforehand. And um, this topic is quite uh, a topic that gained more focus in the last years, because it's a very important topic, in my opinion. And I think you are in very good hands with this. So give it up to Saskia. blind user of your website. Yes, your website. And I'm not just any user. I am a potential customer who wants to give you thousands and thousands of euros. So I'm on your website now. Let's see what my screen reader tells me. Ah, clickable button, clickable button, and oh, clickable button. OK, uh, 10 more clickable buttons without any labels. Oh, well, I have to try all of them one by one. OK, half an hour later. OK, I found your requ uh, request a quote form where I want to offer you that big business deal. Another half an hour later. OK, I've filled out all the form with all the documents and requirements I had to write down. I'm so happy I can submit this, this now. Yay! Oh, there's a ca captcha. Type in what you see without any audio or other uh, uh, options. You know what? I have enough of this. This is so frustrating. I'm not going to a competitor of yours who has a more accessible website. Bye. Well, enough uh, role playing for now. I'm not going away because I'm going to, to t uh, tell you in the next h half an hour or so how you can avoid this kind of scenario because this could ha be happening on your website any time without you even noticing that the user is frustrated or that you miss out on a business opportunity because your website isn't accessible enough. So let's have a little look around how um, our accessibility journey will uh, turn out today. So first we have a little uh, section about me that will be quite short. The second one will be, why should you actually care about digital accessibility? Why is it important? The third will be what accessibility actually means and what criteria there is. Then the next one is, how and when should you think about accessibility in your project and in your team? The main part of this talk will be examples of accessibility issues and how to, uh, you can fix them. At the end, we'll also be quickly talking about how you can then test if uh, your website meets the cr uh, criteria you selected. So let's get started. About me, I, I'm a web developer for, for almost 10 years, and I'm also a web user uh, with a visual, visual impairment. I never heard some fun facts. I never heard about NEOS before, but I love this conference and I love all of you. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I run a German tech and gaming blog, and I love speaking about accessibility. And I'm more the uh, the back-end person, because one day in my first job, a colleague asked me, hey, Saskia, can you do the front-end part, um, just implementing a template uh, design? 
I did it, and then I went up to him all proud saying, here it is. And she, his reaction was, he yelled at me, he said, Saskia, all the paddings and margins are wrong and all the font sizes and everything. I just wanted to melt to the floor and go away. But then I thought, ah, he has picked someone with 10% eyesight to make a pixel perfect design uh, implementation, so <laughs> he must have known that uh, I'm not uh, great at, at all the little fine details. So, enough about me. Why is accessible, uh, accessibility important? The first thing we had in our little role-playing section at the beginning, that uh, you could miss out on potential customers who can't buy from you or who can't request your services because uh, your uh, forms and your, your website is very accessible. The second thing is that Accessibility is also good for non-disabled users. For example, subtitles in your videos is great for people who have hearing issues, but also for people whose, headfo whose wireless headphones died on the underground, but you want to keep to watch um, the video without annoying anyone, so they watch it without sound. And the third thing, of course, is that it's um, just a, a morally good thing because um, having um, accessibility, accessibility issues cuts off the access to uh, some of the benefits that our digital world has to offer. So what is accessible, uh, accessibility? Well, my, uh, defini my loose definition is that it is just um, the, the ability of all your users, uh, regardless of their disability or their life circumstance, to use uh, the, your website or software fully without many issues. So accessibility is, is just uh, bridging the gap between your users' issue issues and where they need to go on your website. So, there are some criteria made by the um, World Wide Web Consortium. They are uh, web content accessibility guidelines. And um, as I also teach in my online course, they're not just f uh, for websites. Uh, they are meant for websites, but they can also be used for any uh, digital, like any software or any app that can also uh, benefit from checking uh, those uh, guidelines. So when should you think about accessibility in your project? Many people either or companies either don't think about accessibility at all, or they think, hey, we can do it at the end if we have some time left over. But who of you has lots and lots of time left over before the deadline of a project? Please hands up. <laughs> of course, I don't have either. So, and also if you would do it at the end, then you'd have to redo maybe some uh, not very accessible design, design decisions or front-end work. So the best thing is to think about it right in the design and concept phase. And who should do it in your company? Your UX person, your graphic designer, uh, who, who else? Well, it, for me, it, it would be a team effort, everyone contributing their expertise in how to make uh, your website more accessible. So, let's come to the main part, all the different issues. Your users on the one side, and uh, you, you, wh where they want to go is another side. There are lots of little bricks, depending on, depending on uh, what uh, accessibility needs they have. There are lots of little hurdles where they have to climb over and they struggle. But today, I can show you how to take quite a few of those hurdles away so that they can go uh, to, to the place where they need to go so that your user is happy and you are happy. But before we get into that, I just want to let you know, don't, uh, don't, don't, don't try to be perfect because none of us have time to um, really do every little detail uh, right. So my suggestion is if you are strapped in a time uh, budget, then to use the most, uh, the biggest criteria or the most biggest issues that could uh, have the biggest impact on your users and to fix them first. So, the first um, issue that I want to talk to you about is um, icon-only buttons. You see here, like, 
in many word processors, there's just a button for save. It's a floppy disk. It's not just inaccessible for blind people, but also for really young people who don't know anymore what a floppy disk is. <laughs> but uh, in general, on websites, if you have an icon-only button, then I would. Um, the good thing is to do a title tag where you describe uh, that the button means save. But for people like me, I can't still see something, um, and I, but the icons are really small. So if if your design uh, aesthetic allows, then also maybe add some text like the the, the floppy disk and then the word save or something. Then images. That's something that I'm also uh, a bit guilty of in my own like personal websites that I sometimes forget to put uh, alternative tags and images. But this is really important so for both. As I learned yesterday, it's also important for search uh, engine optimization so that, uh, that search engines know um, what your image is about. But of course, mainly for accessibility or for people who have a slow internet connection and who who where the images are aren't loading or something. So. Add um, an alternative text, except if it's just like a decor uh, decorative element, like a dotted, dotted line or something that doesn't have any content, then of course you don't need um, a, a, an alt description. This is one of my most frustrating things lately. I'm sitting in, on the underground and I just want to sign up to an app and uh, I. I click on uh, submit or register, and just nothing happens. And I try and try and try and try again. And then I notice, oh, there's a little bar flashing up for two or three seconds. And I try to go there with my screen uh, reading, uh, not, not screen reading, with my screen magnifier. But it pops, uh, it just fades away after a couple seconds. I worked around by uh, making a, scre uh, a screenshot as soon as I saw it and then zooming into it. But my suggestion would be for those kind of auto fading um, error messages or even su success messages to not make them auto fading, but to make a little close uh, option, especially also not just for people who, are, who have. Um, who have visual impairments, but also for people who have, for example, reading difficulties who just need longer. So make um, make a close button at the end so that people can uh, read it, uh, read your message, and then um, just close it on their own timing. So um, videos and, and audio. So for videos, of course, um, has two things. I often want to uh, watch. Uh, software tutorials, and there's some sc uh, screen recording with only background music, and I think, hey, I can't really follow it without anyone talking over it. So the one thing is for people who can't uh, see well to have some kind of um, so some kind of uh, talking over over what you are showing, and for people who can't hear well, of course, uh, either for podcasts or for audio only me medium, uh, would be um, that would be good to have a transcript, uh, and for uh, for videos, of course, to have um, captions. So now, um, mouse only content as often so like interactive maps or like a plane or train or event a seat booking uh, feature where I said click on the seat to reserve it. I think people who have like mobility issues who can't use mouse or people who um, who, who have to use the, the keyboard because uh, they can't see where they're clicking, they um, always need keyboard um, accessibility. So my suggestion would be as, as much as it is possible to make um, every feature of your website also reachable uh, just with, with a keyboard. Now, um, captures, they have already gotten better with all those Google recaptures where you just have to click a little uh, checkbox, I'm human. But like many old like discussion forums or contact forums, they still have that little type in what you see, which of course is difficult for people who are blind, so, um, or even for people like me who just have a limited uh, vision. So uh, the more options you have, um, the more accessible it is. You could, for example, also have a type in what you hear or answer a quiz question or uh, something like that, something where you don't have to see. Um, so 
think of some, uh, some alternatives that you can offer to, for people. So the next thing is content structure and uh, be how your content uh, is readable. So because there are many people who either have learning disabilities or reading difficulties or who just are new in the language that your website is written in. So uh, think about, yes, many of you may be experts in your field and you have to show on your company website that you know what you're talking about, that you use the right terminology, but as much as it is possible, um, use uh, the, the most simple and understandable language and there's also tools online where you can paste in your text and where you can then get a, a score, a readability score and suggestion how to improve it. So, um, design choices. This, this is also um, why, uh, why I said earlier that it's good to think about accessibility right in the uh, concept and design phase, not at the end where you have to redo all of it. So things like contrast and colors and font types and font sizes. Um, it's important there are tools also there to check uh, ah, is my contrast good enough or is my, is my um, font size uh, large enough and stuff. Um, so it's good to um, make designs accessible from the beginning rather than having to do the, all the color schemes and all the uh, things that could cost you lots of time and money. So the next thing is zooming on mobile. Of course, this has also been uh, gotten better the more people know how to do responsive uh, right. Um, but uh, there's still some websites where I try to pinch to zoom and then uh, it just snaps back to, uh, to the original size, which of course isn't the best thing if you just need a larger font. Uh, so I, I have uh, a little code snippet here. I, don't, I haven't used that, that um, right, right now um, because I never had like, the, the issue on my own websites, but um, there are also multiple approaches to fix uh, this issue, so you can also uh, Google it if, if your website has that issue. So, we're almost um, at the end already. Um, so, how to test for accessibility. There are two, two options I want to show you. One is to do it manually, to say, okay, I pick the criteria in the web content accessibility guidelines that I want to test for, and then I'm going through them one by one, looking at all their, uh, their requirements, and then testing them with some online tools, with, for example, also the accessibility tab in your um, developer tools in your browser and all that, and just going through it manually. Or you can do it like a, you know, almost like a usability test where you invite people, someone with hearing difficulties, someone who, with reading problems, uh, different people, and they can test your website and they give um, you some uh, feedback and then what issues they came across and then you can fix it. So let's wrap it up. Um, you have learned what accessibility is, why it is important, and uh, when to do it um, in your project, who should be involved in it, and lots and lots of examples. But also look at that slide again. Um, pe people who don't know that phrase that they think may think, hmm, she says, let's food it arrow. So accessibility isn't just about websites. There's where anywhere where there could be an issue between you or your information and the recipient. So before we come to the last slide where there's also a QR code for some free bonus content, uh, like a worksheet and a list with accessibility testing tools, I have uh, one more little uh, push for you to really think, uh, take action and uh, implement accessibility optimizations. And that is, we're all uh, getting older. That means uh, maybe our hands don't work as, as well anymore. We can't really use a mouse or our hearing and vision decreases. So don't just make accessible websites for others. Do it for the future you. Thank you.
So, thank you very much, Saskia, with a very important topic. And I think you brought it nearer to the audience what that actually means and that you shouldn't have a too narrow look on it. It's very good. So, a, a question to you. Yes. How do you like the conference and the NEOS community so far? I love it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and we love to have you here. And I think, Anke, you have a question for us. Uh, yes, I have a question, and there's one question from the audience, so Very I will tell, uh, ask them first. I hope I can answer them, because I'm not a know-it-all, I just, uh, whatever I, ha I have, I am sharing. <laughs> Which tools do you prefer to check the mentioned to-dos? Uh, they're, they're different ones, like, I have, like, I don't know them by name, I'm just, like, always Googling, okay, I need to check uh, colors, okay, then I'm tr just Googling, tra um, uh, trans not transparency, uh, contrast checker, or I need to um, look at readability, then I just, I'm just Googling uh, readability checker, and, like, I'm looking, okay, which one would be best, and then I, I choose for that project. So I'm, I, I never use one specific tool. I'm just Googling, okay, which tools they are. And I've also collected a, a list of the bonus materials with some tools. And there's also from the web, uh, from the um, uh, World Wide Web Consortium, there's also an official list with all the accessibility uh, tools that they know of. And I've also linked that in my, in my uh, sheet. Great. And uh, yeah, my question for you was, um, as a developer, how are the, our tools we use uh, on a daily basis accessible? Um, so I've never tested ex uh, developer tools for accessibility. Um, for me, they, they are OK, they're usable, because I don't need, need a screen reader. I just have to like, really put my nose in front of the screen. <laughs> So and then that I can uh, that I can use my um, my code editor and everything uh, quite fine. So thank you. Thank you very here. much. We, we we do have a present for yes, you, of course. For sure. um, please do not forget to rate Saskia's talk. Yeah, I have on on, on, I have it on the slide. Oh, it's gone. The slide is gone. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And don't forget to rate all the other talks if yeah. you haven't. Yet, and I think we have the lunch break now. We have the lunch break, and uh, as we uh, announced in the beginning, please, the uh, sponsors and the award winners, if they could come to the stage to uh, have some photo shoot. And I think, Sebastian, when are we going to, I think, at 2 o'clock? 2.15, we continue. 2.15, we are going to continue here. Uh, and now, enjoy your lunch, and again, a warm applause to Saskia. Thank <laughs> you.